I love liner wash. I love the combination of really strong ink with real softness of watercolour, whether it's something very expressive and loose like this owl over my shoulder or a little more precise and measured like the, the amaryllis over the other one. The question I always get asked is, oh, which should I do first? Should I do my line first or the watercolour first? Do I do a drawing and colour it in or a painting and outline it? Well, I've got an exercise for you to explore both options so that you can reach your own conclusions. My name is Liz Chatterton. I'm a watercolour artist based in Berkshire and every week I bring you a tip or trick that I wish someone had told me about ages ago. And this week it's that question, which comes first, line or wash? This exercise is taken from my online course, which is really comprehensive and takes you through from ink right through to advanced techniques. I'll put a link in the comments in case you're interested in that. So let's crack on. Any fruit or vegetable from the fruit bowl or the fridge is great for this exercise. I've just grabbed this pepper and I'm going to start by drawing it in pen. I'll speed this up for you so you don't have to watch the whole thing. But just do a lovely loose drawing of a pepper, a celebration of a pepper and it doesn't have to be overly accurate either because this pepper is going to help us explore whether ink first or watercolour first is the way we want to go. It's going to help us explore the strengths of both and the challenges of both. And it's a really simple way of doing it, but it actually teaches us a huge amount. So I'm just using a 0.3 waterproof micron pen. And it does have to be waterproof because I'm going to put watercolour over the top when I'm finished. And obviously, if it wasn't waterproof, I'm just going to end up with some hideous muddy mess which would be quite upsetting so I'm doing a lot of continuous line work I said I was going to speed this up but actually this isn't going to take very long so maybe I'll just carry on wittering I'm doing some continuous line work to sort of get some nice energy going I'm putting those little seeds in because they're kind of fun and I mustn't forget to put this little bit where I can see from the wonky um, pepper the outside as well. It'd be nice if I could put some sort of texture in so I if, frankly if I can't see it I'll create it and this is a great exercise to do. Lemons are lovely to do because they're such a nice shape um, oranges, you know, you've got some detail from the flesh, but just pulling radishes out of the garden, or if you've got some carrots that have still got the leaves attached, they're good fun. Um, just something with a little bit of detail. Half a tomato would be great. Uh, and getting some lines in, some texture, whatever you fancy. If at all possible, try to do this without any sort of um, drawing and the reason it's nice to do without uh, pencil drawing first is that it makes you a lot more committed to your your pen line it really makes you observe and look if you know you haven't got the, the the slight crutch of being able to use an eraser and get rid of any sort of dodgy marks so it makes you think about what you're doing maybe a little bit more but obviously if you need that then do it because it's your drawing it's your exercise so don't let someone like me boss you around um, you do what you want but as I say there are a lot of advantages to having a go at just 
drawing freehand. And the great thing with a fruit or veg, it doesn't have to be perfect because there is an infinite variety in nature and what is perfect in nature. I mean, look at this, it's got some nasty blemish, which I can either put in if I want to, I can leave out, I can make it symmetrical and wonderful if I want to, I can make it the wonkiest vegetable in the world, should I wish. And there is my veg. I mean, I would put in a little bit of detail, a few marks, just to, to give a bit more interest because it is such a simple subject. But that's probably about all we need. Now, just use very simple um, colours. I think that's a bit of Indian yellow. Let's mix up a wash. I'm going to have a little look here. And in fact, I'm going to be really deliberately not accurate of adding in washes. What I am noticing is this area round the seeds is white. There's a little bit of yellow in there so I could put that in. I'm deliberately going over lines. Gonna take some green up there and let the um, yellow go for a little walk should it wish to. There's a bit of green sort of lurking in round there as well. And should I wish, have I got any more yellow here? I've got slightly different sort of gungier yellow, which isn't really the right colour. But I'm just going to pop that in just to stop this being too simple. And that could be our pepper. If it was a softer, fluffier vegetable, I might spray the edge and get some of that to, to meander away but I reckon a pepper is quite a hard-edged fruit. I'm just dropping a little bit of extra paint in there. Now I splotted there by accident. One splash looks like an accident, but maybe if I put a couple more, it might look like I actually intended it. I'm gonna let that dry. Let's start with watercolor first. Now people find it quite tricky to do a fairly random loose watercolour drawing. So my top tip is we're actually going to print with this pepper to get our watercolour onto the paper. By its very nature it's going to be pretty random. You know, I can again just put in a little bit of watercolour to, to spread through there. That was, we're, going, we're sort of working backwards. Um, I am just going to increase the size of that a little with my brush because otherwise that was going to be too small compared to the one we did here. And it's, it's a mirror image. So I'm going to pull that stalk over a little bit, do that, a bit of green and maybe put a few splots so that we've got like for like there. Right, we'll let that dry and then we'll come and put pen over the top. Right, this is dry so we can carry on. Let's use this half as our muse here. So we have put in very loose watercolour washes effectively by, by um, printing with our pepper. And we can pretty much ignore where those washes are to develop our lines. So I am looking more at my pepper half than I am at where the watercolour is. And the reason I'm doing that is that I really want my line and my colour to add up to more than the sum of the parts. Just outlining 
a painting or just colouring in a drawing loses some of the potential of pen and wash in my opinion. I'm putting in some of the seeds. They don't show up on this half but they did on the other and I like them and it's my drawing so I can if I want. Now you may want to do this in a far more detailed and precise way and that's lovely. I'm just trying to do it relatively quickly so that you can see what's going on. And I think I'll put a little bit of the pepper at the back like that and more of these lines in here because they're the fun ones. Now over here we noticed that the middle was white and the flesh was coloured. Because we printed with it that's not the case here. But does that matter? No, no it doesn't because we can just enjoy it for for what it is. Now if there were some particularly nice marks that we liked and wanted to emphasise, we could outline those deliberately, which is what I was just doing there, just to make those a little stronger. Well, let's put in a couple more pe um, of the seeds. And I'm just going to look back here and actually because the seeds are such fun, now this is dry, I can of course go back over and add more ink if I didn't do enough to start with. So the whole question of watercolour first or ink first is really pretty immaterial because as long as the layers are dry you can keep swapping backwards and forwards to your heart's content. So it's probably best to try and stop a little bit too soon. So do a little bit le less ink than you think you're going to need or a little bit less watercolour than you think you're going to need because actually if you've got that wrong it doesn't matter, you can always go and put more in. The biggest difficulty is taking it out. I could add more watercolour in here if I wanted to, but actually I like that white area, so I don't think I will. What I do want is a few more lines in the middle there. Now, as I say, this is an example of the, the exercise that I do on my online line and wash course where I do it in far more detail. This really simple exercise I think just shows that wash can come first, oh, wash can come first, line can come first, we can alternate and build up the image. As a general rule usually the one that you do first tends to dominate a bit more so I've got a little bit more detail on the line work in this one. In this particular case, I actually prefer this with that abstract white mark through the middle, just the way it's worked. But if you're starting to work in line and wash, have a go at this, work out which you prefer, or if you get stuck in a rut, do the opposite from your normal. If you usually start with one medium, just start with the other for fun. 